France is in shock as Senegal's new president cuts off all oil supply to France. The recent announcement by Senegal's newly elected president regarding the renegotiation of mining and oil contracts has garnered significant attention and sparked debate among industry participants and experts. Senegal has boldly declared its intention to prioritize the well-being of local communities by revisiting existing contracts to ensure they benefit the people of the country. While this move is lauded for its commitment to social responsibility and equitable distribution of resources, there are concerns about the potential risks it may pose to future collaborations and investments in the country. Industry participants and experts have raised apprehensions about the uncertainty surrounding the renegotiation process and its potential impact on investor confidence. In today's video, we will explore the implications and various viewpoints surrounding Senegal's decision to renegotiate mining and oil contracts. It is crucial to analyze the potential benefits and drawbacks of this approach to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications for the country's economic development and future partnerships with international stakeholders. Before we proceed, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for all updates on the latest news and developments. We also encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments section about what you believe Senegal's new president should prioritize in these negotiations. President Bassirou Diome Faye's landslide victory in last month's election marked a significant turning point for Senegal. In his inaugural address on April 2, Diome Faye announced plans for an audit of mining and oil contracts, assuring investors of the country's continued openness to foreign investment. This move reflects a departure from the previous administration's investor-friendly approach under Macky Sall. Unlike his predecessor, who prioritized infrastructure development but struggled to address rising living costs and unemployment, Daim Faye's coalition government is committed to fulfilling more radical campaign promises, including the renegotiation of contracts with foreign businesses. This shift in strategy signals a clear break from past policies and a willingness to prioritize the interests of Senegal's citizens over those of multinational corporations. Despite the government's assurances, politicians and business analysts have cautioned against the renegotiation of mining and oil contracts. They argue that such a move could unsettle investors and jeopardize future partnerships, leading to uncertainties and potential changes in contract terms. Concerns have been raised about the impact on investment inflows and the country's overall economic stability. In response to these concerns, Diome Faye's Minister of Energy and Mines, Boram Soul Daipan, reiterated the government's commitment to transparency and accountability. He stated that the audit would serve as a basis for renegotiating contracts related to mining, oil, and gas if deemed necessary. However, the potential consequences of these renegotiations remain a subject of debate among experts and stakeholders. The decision to renegotiate oil and mining contracts in Senegal as pledged by President Bassi Rudayami Faye, has significant implications for the country's economic development and international relations. Daimi Faye, who at his election became the youngest democratically elected president in Africa, campaigned on prioritizing the renegotiation of contracts related to oil and gas. He argued that the existing contracts signed by previous administrations were unfavorable to Senegal's interests. However, Woodside Energy, an Australian company with a major stake in Senegal's offshore Sangamore oil and gas field, has urged the government to respect the sanctity of contracts. Woodside Energy holds an 82% interest in the Sangamore field, which is slated to commence oil production in mid-2024. The company's plea underscores the importance of contract stability for maintaining investor confidence and ensuring continued investment in Senegal's energy sector. Former President Macky Sall cautioned against the potential consequences of renegotiating mining contracts, warning that attempting to alter existing agreements could have disastrous repercussions for Senegal. Sall emphasized the importance of honoring contractual obligations and maintaining stability in the country's business environment. According to documents from the previous administration and the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, the Senegalese state stands to benefit significantly from future oil and gas profits, with up to 60% of revenues earmarked for government coffers. This revenue-sharing arrangement highlights the potential economic benefits of the country's natural resource wealth, 
provided that contracts are managed effectively and transparently. Ibrahim Abaker Tram a former Petros and communications manager sheds light on the nature of oil contracts, particularly regarding the absence of explicit renegotiation clauses. Instead of including provisions for future renegotiation, these contracts typically contain clauses aimed at regulating potential disputes that may arise during the contract period. According to DRAM, while explicit renegotiation clauses are not commonly found in oil contracts, clauses addressing dispute resolution mechanisms are prevalent. These dispute resolution mechanisms often involve arbitration or specific procedures for addressing disagreements that may arise between the government and oil companies. However, the absence of explicit renegotiation clauses can lead to uncertainty for both parties involved if circumstances change significantly over the course of the contract. In essence, the focus of these contracts is on resolving disputes within the framework of the existing agreement rather than rewriting the terms entirely. While these mechanisms are effective in addressing minor disagreements, they may fall short in situations where a major change occurs that necessitates a significant overhaul of the contract terms. This lack of explicit renegotiation clauses underscores the importance of clear and comprehensive contract frameworks that anticipate potential changes and provide mechanisms for addressing them. Without such provisions, both parties may face challenges in adapting to evolving circumstances and ensuring that the contract terms remain fair and equitable over time. DRAM's caution regarding the renegotiation of contracts underscores the potential risks involved and the impact it could have on Senegal's reputation as an investment destination. He highlights the importance of considering the country's image in the global investment community as any perceived instability or uncertainty could deter potential investors. In less developed fields such as Senegal's Icartarian gas field, which is still in the early stages of development, the renegotiation process may be relatively easier. This is because there haven't been significant expenditures made in these areas yet, making the renegotiation procedure simpler. However, the risks associated with renegotiations could vary depending on the specific projects involved and their stage of development. President Basiru Diome Fadi's campaign pledge to prioritize the welfare of the local population underscores the overarching goal of the contract renegotiation process. By ensuring that the benefits of the oil and mining sectors are shared more equitably and contribute to the well-being of surrounding communities, the government aims to address long-standing inequalities and promote inclusive economic growth. Shortly after assuming office, President Diome Faye wasted no time in taking action to bolster the national economy and finances. His directive to the Prime Minister to create an urgent action plan reflects his commitment to delivering on his campaign promises and driving tangible progress for the country. This proactive approach demonstrates President Diome Faye's determination to implement radical reforms and prioritize the interests of the Senegalese people. The International Monetary Fund's forecast predicting Senegal's forthcoming oil and gas production to drive economic growth into double digits next year sheds light on President Basa Rabdain Faye's concerns regarding contract renegotiations. This anticipated economic boom underscores the significance of ensuring that the benefits of the oil and gas sectors are distributed equitably and contribute to sustainable development. Despite his lack of prior political experience, the 44-year-old Diane Fay secured a landslide victory in last month's election on a platform of radical reform, making history as the youngest president of Senegal. In a statement issued following his first cabinet meeting, Diome Faye directed his prime minister and former mentor, Usmane Sonko, to develop an action plan by the end of the month. It is reasonable to assume that the negotiations over oil and mining contracts are integral components of this action plan. Diome instructed Sonko to conduct a comprehensive review of existing programs and plans with a specific focus on assessing the state of public finances, international cooperation, and public-private partnerships. Furthermore, Diome Faye emphasized the urgency of the situation by imposing strict deadlines for the completion and implementation of the action plan. He stressed the importance of immediately launching bold policies to revitalize the national economy in collaboration with the Senegalese private sector. 
President Basarab Dain Fay's directives signal his unwavering commitment to fulfilling his campaign promises and driving substantial progress across Senegal. With a focus on economic revitalization and fostering collaboration between the government and private sector, Diome Faye aims to establish the groundwork for inclusive growth and prosperity for all Senegalese citizens. The president's agenda represents a profound departure from the status quo, aiming for transformative change across all aspects of the country's economic and social landscape. Senegal, with its population of 18 million people, grapples with significant challenges, including high poverty rates, soaring unemployment, and the economic repercussions of global events such as the war in Ukraine and the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past three years, social and political unrest has further exacerbated these issues, leading to a decline in investment, escalating debt, and record high inflation rates. In response, President Diome Faye's government has outlined key priorities, including preserving human rights, reducing living expenses, and creating job opportunities, particularly for the country's youth population. Central to these efforts are the ongoing negotiations surrounding oil and mining contracts, which carry significant implications for Senegal's economic trajectory. As the country seeks to transition into an oil-producing nation, the outcome of these negotiations will play a pivotal role in shaping the future of its energy industry and broader economic development strategies. The government's commitment to ensuring that contracts are in the best interests of Senegal is paramount in the ongoing renegotiation process. While the specifics of how the contracts will be restructured remain undisclosed, potential modifications could encompass terms and conditions, revenue sharing arrangements, and other provisions crucial to safeguarding the nation's interests. For investors, closely monitoring the outcome of these discussions is imperative to assess the stability and attractiveness of the investment climate. Despite the uncertainties surrounding the renegotiation process, Senegal remains an appealing investment destination due to its favorable legal and regulatory framework and policies aimed at protecting individual investors. Moreover, the government's dedication to transparency and equitable benefit distribution may serve to bolster investor confidence in the long term. By demonstrating a commitment to openness and fairness, Senegal aims to foster a conducive environment for investment and economic growth. Recognizing the complexities of negotiating agreements within the extractive industries, Senegal has sought support from international organizations to strengthen its institutional capabilities. The World Bank, for instance, has offered technical assistance to ensure that initiatives for the development of the oil and gas sector align with public interests and attract funding from the private sector. The partnership with international organizations, such as the World Bank, holds significant promise in ensuring the successful renegotiation of contracts and fostering sustainable growth in Senegal's oil and gas industry. While the renegotiation process entails inherent risks and uncertainties, collaborative efforts with experienced partners can mitigate these challenges and pave the way for favorable outcomes. Senegal's decision to renegotiate mining and oil contracts reflects its commitment to fair resource distribution and economic optimization. However, navigating these negotiations requires careful consideration of the volatile nature of the mining and oil sectors, as well as the complexities involved in contract negotiations. President Basarub Diome Faye faces a myriad of challenges, including those associated with the renegotiation of contracts, as well as his pledge to overhaul the colonial currency used in West Africa, the CFA franc. The plan to transition away from the CFA franc aligns with the broader regional movement observed in countries like Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali. These nations seek to assert their economic independence and shed remnants of colonial influence, signaling a shift away from long-standing French dominance in the region. Under the leadership of President Diome Faye, Senegal aims to redefine its relationship with former colonial powers and champion a new era of pan-Africanism rooted in self-determination and sovereignty. Senegal's plan to introduce a national currency marks a significant departure from the CFA franc zone and represents a pivotal moment in the region's economic landscape. The success of this transition hinges on the country's ability to effectively organize and implement the shift to multiple new currencies or a completely independent currency freed from French influence.
Many stakeholders are hopeful that President Basarab Diome Faye will collaborate with leaders like Abraham Treyure of Burkina Faso and other prominent figures in the region to establish a unified currency. However, the exact path forward remains uncertain, and the outcome of these discussions will shape the future of monetary policy in West Africa. Amidst these developments, Senegal must proceed cautiously with its renegotiation efforts. Potential risks include protracted legal disputes, strained investor relations, and delays in project implementation. To mitigate these dangers and maintain investor confidence, transparency, and adherence to global best practices are essential throughout the renegotiation process. By conducting negotiations openly and transparently, Senegal can demonstrate its commitment to fostering a conducive investment climate and attracting additional funding for key projects. Furthermore, clear communication and collaboration with stakeholders will be crucial in navigating potential challenges and ensuring a smooth transition to a new currency system. In your opinion, do you think renegotiation of these oil and mining contracts will be risky for Senegal? Let us know what you have to say in the comments below. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe our channel. Turn on notifications too so you get notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.